Okay, video 49, vlog, vlog 49 um, on respiratory disease in cows um, and huge thanks to Renko Protein and Netics for their support and helping me put this uh, video series together. No whiteboard today, something a little bit different, embracing a little bit of technology. Still have the mark on my hand as a little crutch, just so used to it. Um, today I'm going to talk about respiratory disease in adult dairy cows. It's something that has come up, uh, been asked about over the series to cover. Um, I've had two herds in the last month who've had issues with it the um, last two weeks. And it's something that every summer we see more and more of. Um, and if I look at respiratory disease um, in any animals, cows, calves or anything, I always start at a basic starting point about understanding, and you've heard me say it during the video series, about immunity on one side and infection pressure on the other. Infection pressure is the amount of a pathogen or bacteria or virus that can overwhelm the immunity if it's high. Or if immunity is compromised in any way, a lot of these viruses in particular will be circulating in our herd. Some of the bacteria that I'll talk about, they're naturally pathogens that are naturally in the throat and tonsils of, of animals, so they can be there. Um, so it's very under, uh, important to start off at that basic uh, starting point. And we see respiratory disease in adult dairy cows, ask the question, have, have we got a compromised immune system for some reason? Is there some stressor or some inconsistency in the routine that's led to this? And a really fundamental starting point is to understand production. Because uh, production outputs in milk need to match with inputs at this time of year with peak lactation. And is there a gap between those two? And we certainly see a spike in respiratory disease in May. And why are we seeing it? It's probably down to the fact that yes, cows are hitting peak lactation. And on some farms, we and both the farms that I saw issues with, uh, two weeks prior on both farms had dropped out, uh, a, a drop back meal on their cows. Um, and there was a gap created because they were created, the cows were milking very well and it, we just must understand what that nutritional gap will do the stress it will put on the cow um, will you know for short periods that's fine but if it's prolonged for a week or two weeks or three weeks you'll see uh, uh, issues with immunity particularly where we have some of these viruses circulating in our herds and in May time my experience is um, it's a little bit early for lungworm it's often more related to viral diseases but it can be other issues that can affect and suppress immunity we're seeing more issues with tick-borne diseases and I'm learning a lot about them at the moment what are they doing to our immune systems or cows. We saw Smallenberg years ago, before it caused abortions, these unusual symptoms of cows getting sick with milk drop. Uh, so there could be lots of reasons, but we have to focus in on immunity. Um, the symptoms of respiratory disease in cows are coughing, nasal discharge, drooling, high temperatures, treating sick cows. Um, I suppose when we look at these symptoms, they're not always exclusive and that, you know you can only see some of them. And not every coughing cow um, has lung worm. We must just remember that we, these are symptoms. The cows are telling us something that's there. They can lead us in a direction, certainly. Uh, what agents can cause respiratory disease in cows at pasture? I mentioned bacteria, menhemia, histophilus, mycoplasma are all there, particularly menhemia. Uh, if you look at respiratory diseases then, um, uh, viruses, you, you RSV, PI3, we're all very familiar with IBR, um, we have vaccines for all of those three, but there's other viruses that can be causing problems. There's a coronavirus in cows that causes respiratory symptoms, and there's probably other viruses we don't know that, that exist that potentially could be contributing. A big challenge in grazing systems is lungworm. Now traditionally we would have thought a lungworm is coughing animals in younger stock, but we're seeing it more and more in adult cows. Why? There's two reasons. Immunity developing to lungworm is critical. The other thing is weather and favourable conditions like favourable conditions for grass growth are the same conditions the lungworm parasite likes. So that is a challenge for us in grazing systems. But um, we could be overdosing a young stock, no immunity developing in adults, and then you can get lungworm in adult cows. The other one you would see is reinfection syndrome, where um, immunity wears off, this gut immunity in particular with these young larvae coming through. They might have immunity still in their lungs, and you don't have the adult lungworm developing, but you have these larvae causing the clinical symptoms. It can be very difficult to, 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 to diagnose this reinfection syndrome. So there are some of the agents that can cause issues. And often when we have viral diseases, we can get secondary bacterial infections. Lungworm can open the door for viral infections. So they, they can be very complicated cases. You'll often have uh, one cough and two, and two, and two, and two agents uh, involved, as I've seen in the past, where lungworm starts a problem and then you have a respiratory virus that comes in to continue that issue for those cows. When we look at the time of year, certainly grazing will give us some indications that we're hitting peak yield if it's early May, if it's June, July and August and we have significant coughing, particularly at animals at rest are coming into the parlour, lungworm goes high up the differential list. But we must investigate these cases. Milk drop and losses from uh, coughing cows and respiratory disease are significant and it's worth investing some money to figure out what agents are there? We can use nasal swabs. Lung washes are very effective for reinfection syndrome to look for the lungworm larvae. We can use dung, but they mightn't be very useful for lungworm larvae if there's no adults there, but they could be used. 
bloods can be used. Uh, looking at the nutritional inputs and outputs of the farm is really important when you're seeing respiratory disease. So that's our investigation to try and dig into what's happening because if we know what agent is causing the issue, if we dig in and see if there's any underlying immunity issues, we can make a bit of a plan. And controlling respiratory disease in cows is about, I suppose, understanding Fundamentally, nothing's affecting immunity, uh, correcting any of them. And then if we look at the viral agents, have we got vaccines available for the agents we've identified? How and when will we use those vaccines? What's the best use is the most appropriate use? Of course, during respiratory diseases, we've got to treat the sick cows. But if we're continuing to just treat and hope that it'll go away, it won't. In severe, bad outbreaks of respiratory disease, we've got to act fast. And often I would have, you know, in those cases, it could have happened on a Saturday or a Friday when we were in practice. And, you know, your, your diagnostics, you do them, but you'd have to make a call around treatment, certainly. But you might even have to make a call around respiratory intranasal vaccines to try and stimulate immunity. But really, we need to have a plan around long-term vaccination, controlling immunity. And with lungworm, I think it's looking at, we were only one licensed product for lactating dairy cows, uh, which is a prinomectin. We need to understand that, you know, we can't just overuse this product and not expect resistance issues, not expect cost issues as well, that we need to have a better plan. And I think, and I've talked a lot about it in the past, lungworm vaccination has a role to play in, in, in herds that are having serious issues with lungworm uh, during the grazing season. So respiratory disease in dairy cows, coughing cows, it can be complicated. Always look under the hood to see if there's something affecting immunity. Um, and typically always uh, the first place to start is nutritional stress. Then we need to look at what agents are involved or if there's a multitude of them. The symptoms will give us indications. Um, we could never make presumptions and it's dangerous. And I've seen, you know, coughing cows been treated for lungworm that was, that was a viral disease. And Likewise, I've seen coughing cows with lungworm that have got vaccines that didn't see a response. So that investigation is critical. Long-term control, vaccines make sense. And I think we're learning about this as we talk about coronavirus in humans, the value of diagnostics. We're all chasing a vaccine because we, you know, we see the value in vaccination. And we're all learning also about the, the, the conversations about immunity and even diet and health. Uh, so that's important to remember. So we can apply these principles to coughing cows. Uh, we can definitely, uh, get to the bottom of these problems quicker and it's about control then you good use of vaccination keeping immunity uh, managing immunity well particularly uh, with cows having really peak lactation and nutrition and then looking at managing parasites well during the grazing season if lungworm is a challenge consider lungworm vaccine as part of your strategy in the future that's it my thought for today I've had cows in the background, no whiteboard embracing a little bit of technology with my new green screen looking forward to rolling this out again and I suppose thought for today is friend or foe, I don't know, technology is here to stay and it looks like um, it's going to be something we're all going to have to embrace. I'm doing Zoom calls every day and you know I'm on with uh, farmers and people who have never used Zoom before and are getting the hang of it. I think we'll, uh, we never like to change but I definitely think once we do embrace technology, uh, it's good to get a break from it now but it, it is worth embracing because it's going to be part of all our futures. That's it. Last video is tomorrow. Happy safe farming everybody uh, and I'll catch you for the last video in 1550 tomorrow.